Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. In this video, let's learn how to do a very basic NPC interaction system. So this can be just interact with an NPC to talk to them. Maybe then you open a chat dialogue or maybe some kind of shop interface. The main goal is to know when the player is near an interactable NPC and then start the interaction with an action. Although this exact system can be applied to interact with anything, not just NPCs. So in the end, I will also showcase how to use this to open doors and press buttons. This is a pretty detailed tutorial. I will cover how to identify nearby objects, how to interact with them, prioritize closer ones, show an interact UI element, and more. I will be doing this using a 3D demo, but the concepts are equally applicable to 2D as well. You just need to use a slightly different function. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Learn how to make a Builder Defender game using C Sharp, or learn how to make games internally using visual scripting. Perhaps if you're past the beginner stage and want to make the jump to advance, then check out my turn-based strategy course to learn how to manage a more complex project and write some good clean code. Or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Unity Overview course, which contains over 50 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine. I'm always available in the Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check them all out with the link in the description. Okay, so let's build this NPC interaction system. Here is my demo. I have a character in first person and I can walk around, pretty basic. For the character controller, I'm using the free official Unity Star Assets that I covered in another video. This is the first person controller. And for the visuals over here, I'm mainly using the Synthi City Asset Pack. Then over here for this mini building and that pile of money, that is from the Heist Pack. And for the animations, I'm also using a general pack. There's links in the description if you want to get them. So I can control my character and over here are a bunch of NPCs. So let's begin making our interaction system. First thing we need is to know if an NPC is nearby. So if my player character is standing right here, I want to see if this NPC is near me so that I can interact with them. So let's begin by making a script. So a new C Sharp script. Let's call this the player interact. Here is the player game object, just attach and open. Okay, now here there are several ways to do that. One way would be to check the distance to each NPC. So for example, I could have a list of transform for the NPC list. I could have something like this, then on a private void update, I would test vector3.distance between this transform.position and the NPC on list.transform.position. So I could use this to check if the player is close enough to the NPC. That would work, but that also means you need a reference to every single NPC. So this is a, not a very scalable approach. If your game has hundreds of NPCs, then you're going to need to add hundreds of references and hundreds of distance checks. So for a much better approach, let's not do this. And instead, we're going to use the physics system. So over here, we can go inside physics. And in here, there's a bunch of overlap functions. What these do is it queries the physics world and returns all of the colliders that overlap that area. So this is perfect. With this, we can test and see if there are any NPCs near the player. And if so, then we're going to do something. Over here, we have various functions, each of them with different shape. So for our case, for distance, I think sphere makes the most sense. So let's use this one. This one takes a position, so for the position, let's use the transform.position, so the player position. Then for the radius, let's use some kind of interact range. Let's put maybe two units. Also, if we wanted, there are more versions to this function. For example, we could use a layer mask. So we could put all of the NPCs in a single layer and only test against that layer. That would be one approach. The only limitation with that is you only have 32 layers total. So if you have too many object types, you might run out of layers. So in this case, let's not use a layer mask. Let's hit all of the objects in all of the layers, and then we can cycle through them and check which ones are NPCs. So we have this, which is going to return an array of colliders. Let's put this inside the input. So if input get key down, let's test for the E key, just like in so many PC games. Okay. So we press the E key and we get all the colliders. So let's store them. So this returns a collider array. And now just for testing, let's cycle through all of them and do a log. So let's do a for each collider, collider in the collider array. And for each of them, do a debug.log on the collider. Okay, that's it. And then over here in the editor, all we need to do is make sure that our objects, our NPCs already have a collider. And up here you can see they do have a capsule collider. If they don't have a collider, then they pretty much don't exist in the physics world. So that function would not work. So in order for this to work, they must have a collider. Okay, so let's test. So here we are, I'm far away from the NPCs, and if I press the E, yep, there we go, look at that log. So I can see a bunch of road objects, so all the ones behind me, the capsule, so this is the player's capsule, and so on. So none of them are the NPCs, since the NPC is way too far away. But now let's move forward, approach the NPC by a little bit, and press the button again. And yep, now here we do see the NPC. 
All right, awesome. So just with this, we already know if an NPC is within range. And now that we know that, the next thing is to actually interact with it. So let's make another script for that. A new C-sharp script. Call this the NPC interactable. Let's attach to the NPC. Now in this case, in this demo, all of these two NPCs, they are both part of this prefab. So I'm just going to add the script onto this one. Okay, now let's open. And over here, let's make a super simple function just for testing. And for this one, we're going to want to call the function from the player. So let's make it public. If you don't know why I'm saying this, go watch the video on why you should not make everything public. You should only make something public when you have a specific reason for it. Like in this case, we want to interact with this function from the player class, so we need to make this public. So a public void interact. And up here, let's just do a debug.log. So just say interact. Okay, that's it for this script. Now back here in the player script, so we cycle through all the colliders, okay. And on the colliders, let's try to get that NPC interactable component. So we can go into the collider and we can use try get component. We're going to get the component of type NPC interactable. So if this succeeds, then this collider has an NPC interactable. So this is an NPC. And if so, let's interact. So let's just go there and call the interact function. Okay, that's it. Super simple. Let's test. So here I am far away from the NPC. And if I press the E key and nope, nothing happens. Now as I approach the NPC and press, and there you go, interact. All right, awesome. So with this, we already have the system working exactly as we wanted. Now all we need is to handle the interaction any way we want. So for example, over here, I've got a nice chat bubble element. This was made in a previous video. It's just a fun chat bubble with some text and a nice text writing effect. In that video, I made this class with a super easy to use static function. So we just need to call this and it automatically instantiates the object, sets the text and so on. So over here on the NPC interact script, let's just do that. So just go into that script, call the create function. Let's create on this transform for a low composition. Let's put chat bubble a bit up and a bit to the side. Then a nice icon and then some text. Okay, so with this, we have a nice chat bubble. Now again, just for fun, let's make it play an animation. Over here on the NPC, it has an animator. And on the animator, it has a basic idle animation and also a talking animation. The way transitions are set up is all based on this parameter, so just a trigger parameter called talk. So when this happens, it goes into this, and after the exit time, it goes back into idle. So over here in the code, super simple. We just need, first of all, a reference to the animator. So the animator, animator, let's grab it up here on private void awake. Just grab the animator, get component animator. Okay, so we have the animator, and then over here, animator. And in this case, I made that parameter a trigger. So let's make the talk trigger. And finally, for another fun thing, let's make the NPC look at the player. Over here on the NPC, I have a simple script to make it look towards a certain position. This is made using Unity's animation rigging package. It's a super awesome package to let you add dynamic logic on top of your animations. It's really great, really easy to use. Doing something like this, like just rotating the head to face the player is super easy. I covered it in detail in another video. And in here, all I have is the character. The character has a rig, has a head constraint. It's just a basic multi-m constraint. It's constraining the head object towards looking at this object. So if I put the animation in preview and I can move around this object and you can see, yep, the character looks straight towards this position. So all I need is really to place this object on top of the player when the player interacts with it. And that's exactly what this script is doing. So here just have a public function to look at a certain position and then just interpolates a way to make it nice and smooth. This is using lerp, which is a great way to smooth things. I also covered it in detail in another video. So on the NPC, let's add a reference to this script in order to call this function. So over here, let's make that. So private, that one is an NPC head and look at. So over here, let's get it on the awake. And then on interact, let's call the function in order to look at the position, which means that over here, we do need the position. Now we could technically hard code the player reference we could add up here a kind of serialized field and drag the player's reference, or we could use some kind of singleton, something like that. Or perhaps a better approach would be to receive it over here in the function. So let's do that since it's much more adaptable. So in here, let's receive the interactor transform. So a transform for the interactor transform. Then on the player script, over here on the player interact, let's pass in this transform, okay. And over here, the look at position, let's look at this one dot position, but let's add an offset on the Y so the NPC doesn't look at the player's feet. So let's add vector3.up and multiply it by a certain player height. So player height, let's say 1.7 units, and look at that. 
Okay, great. So we have three nice elements on top of our NPC interaction. So let's see if our interact code is working correctly with this and triggering all of these interesting actions. Let's see. Okay, here we are. And if I'm far away and I press the button, nope, nothing happens. Okay, great. Now, as I go towards the NPC and I press the button, and yep, there you go, plays the animation, the nice chat bubble, everything looks great. Then on this other NPC, again, same thing, just look at it. And there you go, the head rotates, plays the animation, the chat bubble, and all of that. All right, great. So as you can see, this system's already looking pretty great. Now we could also add a nice UI element to know when we're close enough to interact. For that, over here, I already have a canvas set up like I usually do. So it's an overlay canvas, scale with screen size with this, okay. Now inside, let's make an empty game object, call it the player interact UI. Then inside, let's make a simple visual. So let's just zoom out a bit. Inside, let's add a UI image. Let's also add a text. Let's put an E. All right, so there it is, just a basic UI element. We want to show our height depending on if the player is near an interactable object. So for that, we're going to enable and disable the game object. In order to not break it and disable and enable the parent game object, let's put these inside a container. So a container, let's just put it on zero, zero and drag these ones inside. Okay, so that way the script can say enabled and we can just enable or disable the visuals. All right, so let's make the script to run this. So let's make an easy sharp script with the exact same name, player interact UI. Let's go up here and attach it. Now here, let's do two basic show and height functions. So we're going to need a reference to the container. All right, there it is, super simple. Just a game object for the container and on show we set active to true, on hide set it to false. Here in the editor, let's just drag the reference, okay? Now here, in order to call these two functions, now we do want to keep our code nice and clean. So what we don't want to do, we do not want to run the physics logic, the physics query, we don't want to run that on the player interact UI. That should stay on the player, not on the UI script. So let's leave it over here on the player script and let's just make a function to expose that logic. So let's make a public, let's return a NPC interactable and let's call it get interactable object. Then on this one, you do exactly this logic. So let's copy. So you have this, we get component and return the NPC interactable. And if we have none, then just return null. Okay, so we have this. Now over here on the UI element, we just need to call that. So we could make the player a singleton. That would be one approach. Or alternatively, just make a serialized field. So let's go with that. Just make a player interact, player interact. Just make it a serialized field. Then on private void update, we ask that question, so player interact dot we get the interactable object. And if this one is not null, then there's something that can be interacted. So let's show. And if not, let's hide. All right, so that's it. Super simple. We just need to drag this reference. So over here, let's drag the player reference. That's it. Let's test. So here we are far away from the NPC. And as you can see, there's no UI. Okay, great. And as I approach the NPC, yep, there you go. As I go in in range, that one does show up. So now I know that if I click here, no nope, can do it. And if I click here, yep, there you go, interaction. Okay, great. Now, one more thing. Let's add support for multiple interactions. Over here, I already have two NPCs. Let's make sure we can interact with both of them exactly as we want. To identify them, let's go over here to the NPC interactable. And let's make a simple, let's make it a serialized field, a private string. Let's call this the interact text. And then let's make a function to return it. So public string get interact text. And we're just going to return this. Then over here in the editor, let's go onto this one and let's fill that in. So let's say talk with Bob. And then for the other one, let's say talk with Alice. Okay, that way we can differentiate between both interactions. And on the UI script, let's show this. So let's go into our UI script. And here, let's just add another text object below. Okay, just like this. Over here on the UI script, let's work with that. So let's add using, first of all, we need the TM Pro. Over here, let's make another serialized field for text mesh pro UGUI. This is the interact text. Then on this one, when we show, let's pass in the object. So that over here we can receive the NPC interactable. 
And then we can just go and set the text equals NPC interactable. And let's get the interact text. Okay, that's it. And now to test a potential issue with this, let's go over here to the player interact and let's increase the interact range from two to four. We're going to see why in a bit. So let's see. Okay, so here we are and let's approach Bob. And if there you go, talk with Bob. And if I approach Alice, yep, there you go, talk with Alice. Okay, so it seems like it's working. However, over here I'm talking with Alice, and even if I get close to Bob, there you go, I'm still talking to Alice. The issue here is due to the way that the collisions work, it's basically dependent on the order in the physics world and not necessarily the closest. So let's set that logic to make sure to check all of the interactable objects around the player, but make sure to prioritize the closest one. Over here we have our interaction. Now let's store a list of NPC interactable. And then when we find something with an interactable, let's add it to the list. So let's add this NPC interactable, but let's not return it, not yet. Then afterwards, let's cycle through that list and find the closest one. All right, so here it is. So we basically create a list, then we cycle through all the colliders, we try to get the component and we add them onto this list. Then we cycle through this list again, and we check if this is the first one that we're finding. If so, make this the closest, but if there's already a closest NPC. If so, then let's check the distance and check if the distance between this one is closer than the one to the closest, then this one becomes the new closest. And at the end, we just return that one. So this will test all of the colliders within this array and return only the closest one. And with this now, we should be able to see the interaction with Alice and Bob, depending on which one is closest. Also, by the way, quick note, you might be wondering why am I not refactoring this code, and you'll see why in a bit, so don't worry about that. Let's just test this. Okay, so over here, if I approach Bob, yep, talk with Bob, and if I approach Alice, yep, talk with Alice. So over here, talking with Alice, and as I approach Bob, yep, I can swap between one and the other, depending on which one is exactly closest. Okay, great, so everything is working. The system now supports multiple interactions within the same range, and we only make sure to interact with the closest one. Finally, like I said, I don't want to just make an NPC interaction system, I want to be able to interact with anything. So over here on this side, I've got a button and a nice sphere, and over there I've got a door with a bunch of cash. So I would like to press a button to open this door and grab all that cash, so let's do that. For that, over here I already have some scripts. So I've got a simple door interactable. This one just got a simple toggle door, which sets the animator in order to open or close the door. And then the button also has a button interactable script. And over here just changes the color from that sphere mesh render and puts it in either blue or yellow and toggles it. Okay, so to implement this into our interaction system, you might think to do the obvious approach, which is over here we are trying to get the component of type NPC interactable, and if so, we interact with it. So over here you can just do the exact same thing for all the others. So we can try to find a door interactable. And if so, let's go into the door and toggle the door. So here, let's make sure to make this public. And up here, we can toggle on the door, okay. And then for the button, then go into the button, and let's also expose that one. So the push button, make it public. And over here, let's push the button. Okay, so just like this, let's see if it works. So first of all, let's go back to the NPC, so let's talk with Bob. Okay, that one still works. Now let's try to toggle on the button, so go and press, and there you go, it does work. And let's go, open the door, and yep, here's a bunch of money. Okay, so everything seems like it works, so all of the logic works. The only thing that isn't working is the UI element, so I'm near the button, but there's no UI element. But still, everything technically works, so this is one possible approach. However, right now our code is extremely complex. We've got a ton of ifs for all kinds of interactable objects. And now this player interacts script, now this one is tightly coupled with the door and the button. So if we were to reuse this script on another game that did not have doors or buttons, then everything would break. And of course, anytime we want to add another interactable object, we would need to come back here and add some more code. So this approach works, but it's obviously not ideal. And to solve this, this specific scenario is exactly where c -sharp interfaces become so useful. I cover them in detail in another video, definitely go watch that if you don't know anything about interfaces. Now here, let's just make an interface for all of the interactable objects. So let's right click, create a new C Sharp script, call it I interactable. That's it, just make the script, don't attach it to anything. And on this script, let's get rid of all of this. This is going to be an interface, so this is not a mono behavior, we don't want it to be that. And this is not a class, this is an interface. 
Okay, so we have our interface and in here we just have two functions. So let's do them just like we did on the NPC. So we've got a void interact and let's receive a transform for the interactor. And then let's also make one that returns a string for the get interact text. Okay, so this is our interface, super simple. Now let's go into the NPC script. So we're here on the NPC interactable and on this one, let's implement that interface. So we're going to implement the I interactable. In this case, that's it. We already have a void interact and a string get interact text. So in this case, we don't even need to do anything. The interface is already implemented. Now let's just implement this on the door and the button. So over here on the button. So let's implement our interface. And now we're going to get our error. So let's use to implement the interface. So here it is. We've got an interact and a get interact text. So for this one, let's return push button. And for the interact, let's just call the push button function. Okay, then on the door over here, the exact same thing. So I interactable. Let's once again implement the interface for the get interact text return open close door. And on the interact, let's call the toggle door. Okay, so all of our objects now implement this common interface. So now we can go back into the player interact script. And over here, instead of doing all kinds of ifs, depending on all of the types of objects, instead, let's just test for one. So just test for the I interactable interactable. So if it does have an interactable component, then we go and we just use the interact function just like this. So everything else can be removed. So that's it. As you can see, we cut down quite a lot of code. And like I mentioned previously, let's refactor this function. The only reason why I didn't do it a while ago is because it would break when we use other types other than the NPC interactable. But now that we are using a common interface, now this is super easy. So we just need to replace all of these references with this. Let's also rename the names. So interactable. And then up here, we use this function instead of doing the exact same thing. So let's just grab the I interactable. And we get it. And if the interactable, it is not null. If not, then interactable dot interact. Okay, so that's it. Super simple, except here we see an error. So we need to expose the transform. So the simple solution is to just add a get transform on the interface definition. So over here, let's make a function that returns a transform called get transform. Then you just need to make this on all of these. So a public transform get transform and just returns this transform. So add it onto the button, then over here onto the door and on the NPC interactable over here, the same thing. And on the player interact over here, we can use that function. So the get transform in order to get the position. All right, so we have refactored all of our code to work with a generic interactable interface. So the button, the door, the NPC, they all share this common interface. And then the player interact script only works with this interface. Now with this, let's test and see if everything is already working. The last thing is just over here on the UI script. So over here, instead of NPC interactable, let's receive just an interactable. And then it's the exact same thing, just get the interact text and so on. Okay, so that's it, so let's test. All right, so here we are, let's approach the NPC and there you go, the UI element shows up and there you go, I can talk to Bob. Let's go over here and yep, I can talk with Alice. And now if we go over here and I approach the button and there you go, I've got the UI element saying to push the button and I push and yep, it does work. And then as I approach the door, there you go, open and close and yep, everything does work. All right, awesome. So this, as you can see, we can interact with any object of whatever type. It's not limited to just NPCs. We can interact with anything as long as it implements that interface and has a physical ladder in order to find it. So adding more and more object types, more and more NPCs, all of that is super easy. Now, if you're working in 2D, all of this works pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is over here with the physics overlap sphere. If you're working in 2D instead of physics, you use physics 2D. And then over here, you've got different overlaps. So you've got overlap area, box, capsule, or you also got a circle. So that's pretty much the only difference. You would use physics 2D instead of physics. And for the colliders, you'd use 2D collider instead of 3D. And that's it. Everything else in this system works exactly the same. All right, so here is a really awesome interaction system to talk with NPCs, push buttons, open doors, or literally do any interaction you want. Again, if you want a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.